Welcome. I'm WTOP's Capitol Hill correspondent Mitchell Miller, and joining me is Bill Hempler, President and CEO of the American Financial Services Association, for a discussion about the consumer financial market, federal oversight, and reform. Our discussion is sponsored by AFSA, the American Financial Services Association. Well, access to credit is important, as you know, to all kinds of aspects of our lives. A uh, solid credit score can help you buy a home. Credit can keep businesses running, help buy a car, major appliances, the list goes on, and deal with a wide range of expenses. But before we get deeper into the various regulatory issues affecting consumers, can you just give us an overview of your organization's mission and what your outlook is for consumers? Sure. Mitch, great to be with you. Thank you for having me. Um, the American Financial Services Association has been around for over 100 years. We were actually created uh, in conjunction with some consumer advocates to make sure that we had a sustainable credit product for millions of Americans. And so, you know, whether it's personal loans, like you said, to, to finance a, a, a refrigerator or stove or oven, vehicle finance, uh, uh, financing a, a mortgage, or everybody's favorite, credit cards, um, credit has been around for thousands of years, and um, our association's been around a lot, you know, uh, newer than that, but we are dedicated to making sure that consumers have access to affordable, responsible credit that they can understand and utilize to their benefit. There are obviously a lot of choices in terms of credit cards and ways to access credit. Uh, credit providers come under federal guidelines, and you deal quite a bit with regulatory issues uh, involving Congress, and a key issue you deal with is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, or CFPB, which was set up for consumers or to protect consumers to get fair treatment from banks, lenders, financial institutions. But your group and some members of Congress are concerned about the direction of where CFPB is going and how that may impact consumers. Uh, as they deal with these rising monthly bills, grocery bills, gas prices. Uh, what kind of protections do you think are necessary and what are some of the issues that you're finding with the Bureau? Well, uh, great question. Primarily what our, our main concern is that, first off, we stand shoulder to shoulder both with Congress and the CFPB and wanting to make sure that the consumers have and understand the credit that, that they're undertaking to transact with our member companies. Um, the CFPB was created in 2010 with very little oversight. And what we found uh, increasingly, and probably most uh, to the point under Director Chopra, who is the current director, is regulation by press release, blog, um, enforcement action, where folks that are in the credit industry that want to be good corporate citizens and make sure that the, the consumers understand what they're doing because at the end of the day, having a consumer understand the products that they're getting is best for both the consumer and for the return that our, cust our companies expect to get from, from those uh, lending transactions. Um, so we stand shoulder to shoulder with them in terms of that mission, but trying to figure out where the lines are, how to be in compliance with regulations when things can change and we have to read tea leaves is really not in anybody's best interest. And one of the issues that's been raised is this uh, term risk. What is risk? What are some of the problems that you find with uh, the Bureau trying to I, either define it or move forward and, and implement restrictions related to it? Well, that, that's essentially what I'm talking about in terms of the enforcement actions, either enforcement actions or litigation that the CFPB has initiated, whereby they designate uh, utilizing their authority under the Dodd-Frank Act, which was 2010, uh, to designate these companies as risky business, risky to consumers, I'm assuming, but they don't actually define what risk is, but they bring enforcement actions. So we actually had something that never happens in Washington these days. We had a bipartisan effort, a letter going from the House Financial Services earlier this year that called on the Bureau to actually define what they mean by risk, risk to the consumer, risk to the taxpayers, risk to, to, uh, to companies that are extending credit, risk across the board. There's no definition, they've not provided any, and I don't know how you are actually supposed to defend yourself 
when there's no definition. One of the things that I looked through was that related to risk, sometimes uh, it sounds like uh, lenders are being asked to look at medical issues, for example, or how much bills pe that haven't been paid in terms of health care and that type of thing. And uh, it seems that some members of Congress have concerns that it's applied in some areas but not in others. Well, I mean, that's, that's the key, is there's no standard from which we're supposed to be able to judge whether or not we're in compliance with the regulations. They've asked, you know, for the inclusion of medical uh, payment history. We can do that. Uh, that's not necessarily a driving indicator in terms of somebody's ability to repay, um, but we can do that. But in terms of whether or not inclusion of medical history is, is an indicator um, of risk, it really just doesn't add up. And you've uh, talked about the need for rules of the road, which dovetails about related to what we're talking about, that it seems at least in some views that there's no real way to gauge exactly what is right or wrong in some of these areas. It, it's, it's literally like being pulled over for speeding and there's no speed limit posted. How are you supposed to know if you're following the speed limit or not? It's just not fair. And what do you say for, for people who say, well, look at what has happened over the years. Sometimes people just get way in over their heads. They get underwater on a variety of credit issues. Shouldn't there be a regulatory agency that kind of helps consumers to look at these type of issues? Oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Uh, we firmly believe that there's a role for a regulator to play. But the regulator, both the regulator and the regulated need to know what the rules of the road are so that there can be some fair judgment in the process. And it seems in recent years there's been a real push uh, among members of both parties in Congress for more transparency. Um, is that something that your organization is comfortable with and, and how do you think that that could help consumers? Well, you know, I think at the end of the day, um, whether it's Truth in Lending or the Equal Credit Opportunity Act or the Fair Lending Act, all of them have regulations, all of them have disclosures. They're fairly straightforward. Uh, if there are improvements that need to be made, we're happy to, to work with that. Um, but, you know, a layering on of a, you know, countless disclosures don't think helps anybody really. Uh, as you're aware, many uh, there's been a lot of attention related to junk f fees. The, the administration has made a big deal of, out of this. Uh, what's, what's your organization's view on how these are implemented and whether there should be caps? And not to get too deep into the weeds on that, but it is something that's getting a lot of attention with penalties for various things uh, when people don't pay on time. Yeah, well, I mean, late fees are, are something that uh, every industry has. It's, it's, you know, a way to ensure that folks are, are paying their bills and, and, and performing on time. 90% of the customers that we've got, be it in vehicle finance or personal loans or, or mortgage, more or less 90% of, of the uh, folks that utilize credit pay on time. Maybe they get a little behind. There are roughly about 10% that really get into the weeds and need to, we need to work with them. We do work with them. And at the end of the day, you know, it's about assessing their risk. They still have credit needs. They still need to have access to credit. We're a credit driven economy. We work with those customers. They're gonna pay a little bit more in terms of the cost associated with it because there's a greater risk and it requires more time, you know? Um, it's not hard to make loans to folks with 800 credit scores, and as a result, they pay lower fees. It's just, that's basic economics 101. And speaking of economics, inflation has obviously affected a lot of people, and I, I think uh, your organization pointed out to a recent study that shows a lot of people just, if they get something that comes up as an emergency uh, that they have to pay for, whatever it might be, they might not even have a few thousand dollars to come up with that money. Well, would that it, Mitch, were a few thousand dollars. Uh, I saw a report, uh, I think it was actually on the night of the State of the Union. Um, one of the networks was saying that, uh, you know, 40% of the population can't afford $500. Now, the Federal Reserve has said that percentage is probably right, but the number is more like a thousand. 
whether it's $400 or $1,000, folks are, are struggling out there, a lot of folks, uh, living paycheck to paycheck, and having access to credit allows them to get over that hurdle, work with creditors, make find instruments that, that meet their needs, whereby they can pay stuff off over time and stay out of getting in deeper trouble. And jumping back to Congress, you mentioned the House Financial Services Committee uh, you've been working with closely. Uh, does there seem to be some bipartisan support for what you're looking to get uh, out of Congress and, and these changes from a regulatory standpoint? I, I do think there's an appreciation for the need for rules of the road. Uh, what we're talking about is uh, APA rulemaking authority whereby the CFPB puts forward regulations that they want to promulgate. There's an opportunity for all stakeholders to, to comment on that, be it you know, my member companies, uh, policy makers, consumer advocates, consumers themselves. Take a look at the data that the regulator is relying on, comment on that, provide feedback in terms of the impact, and then come up with a product that's based on all of that feedback. It's a much better way to go. It does seem like there is has been a big push, and obviously uh, the House Republicans have made this push, but also some Democrats have just said that a lot of these things, while well-intentioned maybe when they started out, have become onerous over time. Yeah. Uh, you know, from my perspective, and, and this is Bill Hempler speaking, um, yeah, it, it really is to a certain extent, kind of the, the civil rights issue of our time. Like I said at the outset, we are a credit-driven economy. Everybody needs access to credit. We're an industry that's dedicated to providing affordable means for credit. We want to work with regulators, with Congress, to make sure that things are affordable, transparent, and responsible. Um, and we think the best way to do that is through regular rulemaking authority. And in terms of the consumer, I understand that your organization helps with education and, and tries to get people to know what they need to know when they are borrowing so they don't get in these bad situations. Well, I'm glad you, you, uh, you mentioned that. We have a, a foundation, AFSA Education Foundation, that's got a, an online curriculum. It was primarily uh, created to help out high school students. I don't know about you, I didn't learn a lot about financial <laughs> services when I was in high school. No. Um, but in terms of budgeting, finding insurance for a car, figuring out how, what's the right price to pay for a car, uh, credit cards, the benefits and, and uh, the different packages that you can get. Uh, 36 uh, cur unit curriculum uh, that's fairly easy um, and is free uh, for educators across the country to work with students. And we've actually had, I believe, close to a million and a half students go through that wow. program so far. Did I mention it was free? <laughs> That's always a good price. <laughs> yeah. And looking forward, um, not to put you on the spot in terms of the economy, but what is the outlook right now for people who maybe are in a situation where they need to get more access to credit or they're worried about their finances coming a couple of years now out of the pandemic? Uh, we've seen interest rates kind of settle down a little bit. Uh, what do you think moving forward? Well, you know, I think 24 is still going to be a little rough for some folks. Um, I think the fact that the, the Fed has talked about bringing rates down is going to be beneficial for the overall economy. But I think the bottom line is whether, you know, we're talking about folks that have got pristine credit uh, or folks that have got pretty tough credit scores, uh, there's, there's a product for everybody. Uh, if you're behind in payments, call your, call your creditors, reach out. Folks want a, you to succeed. That's the bottom line message. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you again for joining us. I'm WTOP's Capitol Hill correspondent, Mitchell Miller, and my guest today has been Bill Himpler, president and CEO of the American Financial Services Association for a discussion about the consumer financial market, federal oversight and reform sponsored by the American Financial Services Association. For more information, visit WTOP.com and search AFSA.